Uh, Oxford season may be done, but in many ways, the Wildcats are just getting started. Their head coach, Zach Lyon, carried a football about as far away as he could take it from his native Oxford, Michigan, to college in Dallas, and eventually to the NFL cities of Minneapolis and New Orleans. But stars and timing aligned, and a gravitational pull that can only come from a place like home led Lyon and his football back to Oxford. This time, not as a star player, but as the head coach, replacing a legend, Mickey York on coming home to a place Zach Line never really left. You know, Oxford's, I would just consider it my hometown. You know, it's, it's like the essence of what a hometown is. You know, ever, ever since we moved away, I went to Dallas and played football, and uh, we were living in Minnesota, we were living in New Orleans. I always knew I wanted to end up back here because I wanted my kids to get the experience that I had of living in a, I guess a small town, what you call it, it has that feel, but it's not, it's not small. You know, it's just been a blessing that we were able to come back here, um, and our kids are in the school district now and are getting a lot of the same teachers that I had when I was here. While he was at Oxford, Zach Lyon was a star running back and all-state linebacker. After breaking Eric Dickerson's all-purpose yardage record at SMU, he went on to play seven seasons as a fullback in the NFL with the Vikings and the Saints. But when the legendary Bud Rowley decided to hang up his famous yellow pants after 43 seasons and 264 career wins, and Zach's knees told him it was time to retire from the NFL at the end of last season, his path to return to Oxford became clear. You know, I'm a first-time coach, and I'm stepping into a big role in a town that loves football um, and following a guy that is a legend here. You know, and I, you know, I'm here to give everything I can. You know, I, that's all I can do. I can control what I can control. Um, I love the situation I'm stepping into. I love Oxford. Um, I love everything Bud's done for this program. You know, we always, you know, have success because of those who came before us, you know, no matter what profession it is. And fortunately, Bud had a lot of success here and built an outstanding um, culture of football and, um, you know, of just character in these kids. So um, that's not going anywhere, and I'm just going to do whatever I can do to improve upon that. Good give. Well, don't give it. Good. Defense, you're up. Good job, Bo. But when you find out he's coming back to be the head coach here, what was your reaction? That can't be possible. You know, he's in the NFL. Why would you leave New Orleans and come here? We've heard about him our whole lives. You know, you can be like Zach Lyon, go play in the NFL. Oxford football guy did it. Why can't you? And just to know that he, he was going to be by my side um, playing football, coaching me, it was really uh, just big, big to me. So it was intimidating, but very exciting. But at the core, he's really just one of them, which despite his decorated resume, quickly made him very relatable. You see a humble guy like that come back to Oxford, knowing that he's now the head of the program, one of the legends that we talk about, and he is now one of them, and he just kind of took it on as in, I'm here, and he doesn't act different, doesn't act different at all. Good luck, D. Good luck, Demo D. Good job. For me, it's... It's a, it's a town I love. It's a team I love to play for. Um, it's a culture that I want to keep going. And um, I want to give back and, and give the knowledge that I have from this game um, back to the kids of Oxford. Line isn't the only former Wildcat to return to coach at Oxford. About half of his staff played here at one time or another, including ex-MSU kicker and fellow NFL alum Dave Rayner, who also heard the call to come home. I think that's one of the coolest things that, that we can both bring is just the experience and the... You know, it's not all glitz and glamour. You know, you, not everybody makes $100 million a year. And so I think that there's definitely some stories that we've brought that I've told that kind of brings them back down to you got to work for it. It's not just given to you. And, and there's repercussions to things that you do if you don't do them well. How much do the kids kind of enjoy the fact that, you know, that they've got a couple of former NFL guys on their coaching staff? No, I'm sure they like it because, like I said, they, they've they learned uh, a lot of the Saints playbook. And now when they watch the games, they watch it as a a student of the game, they hear a call, hey, I know that call, that's the one we were running. I'm like, yeah, it's similar offense. You know, I changed some of the words to make things easier, but most of it is pretty similar. Um, so that's been fun, is they, I think they've all become pseudo Saints fans. When you get compared to Drew Brees and Teddy Bridgewater, you know, it's kind of just like, it's super overwhelming, but at the same time, it's just super cool because, you know, your idols that you look up to and you watch on Sundays, now when I watch NFL games, I'm not watching as a fan. I'm watching as a learner. One thing they've all learned at Oxford is that iconic block O is really just a big circle. It's not where it begins or where it ends, but what's inside that makes them whole. And when are we going to see you in yellow pants? <laughs> the, yellow, the yellow pants, uh, I think, will stay with Bud um, forever. You know, that's 
that's uh, one thing you'll always remember about about Bud, and that's a great memory here in Oxford. Um, you know, I might I might change it up and go with blue pants here and there, but uh, it's, it's not it's not going to be the yellow.